Hey guys, welcome back to Wentworth Life and welcome to this weekend's first Prisoner installment. In today's video I am going to be reviewing Prisoner Cell Block H Episode 29 The Top Dog Injured. Now things finally come to a head in this episode between Anne Yates and B Smith but before we get to that, I do want to, you know, talk a little bit about Susan Rice because her storyline also comes to a devastating conclusion. So, in the last episode, Susan had been released on bail, I think it was, and in this episode, we learned that as soon as Susan was released, her husband got custody of the children on the very same day. Now, knowing how crackers Susan really is, Jean goes over to Susan's mum's house to check on her, but Susan isn't there. Her mum tells Jean that Frederick Rice sent some guy over to pick the children up and there was quite a scene and then Susan, she ended up running off somewhere. Later on, Jason Richards is making a live television appearance and the women that went to it are all watching and Meg and Jean are both watching from home. Now, when the show begins, Meg notices that Susan is sitting in the audience just before it cuts away to Jason Richards and this is when Susan stands up, walks over to the stage and she then runs at Jason Richards and throws acid all over his face and into his eyes while live on television. The whole country is in shock and it's not long before Susan is brought back to Wentworth but Susan has entered a whole new level of crazy. She's completely lost her mind and she is eventually sent to a hospital for the mentally insane. We do learn though that Jason Richards and Frederick Rice are actually the same person. So it turns out that Frederick and Susan were married, they had kids together, they were really really young at the time and then he changed his name to Jason Richards when he became a star. It's a very sad story when you think about it and this is indeed Susan's final episode. Monica Ferguson was back just in time for B to give Anne Yates some payback. Like literally Monica just walks down towards the dining room and says hello to the girls. Nobody asks her where the hell has she been. I mean it's very 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 strange. I'm assuming that the actress who is you know who plays Monica maybe wasn't available for a few weeks of filming or something or other because if you remember correctly Monica arrived I think it was episode 16 and this was around the time where the show was actually extended so maybe the actress had other filming commitments and was written out temporarily before she came back like I know she was you know sent to the pound but come on she's been missing for about 10 to 12 episodes anyway on the subject of Anne Yates the whole prison now knows what she's really in there for and B really is out for her blood the women start calling Anne a dog and it's not long before the officers learn that the women have learned the truth so the officers then have to keep a close eye on Anne. There are a few incidents in the dining room where B throws some salt into Anne's food and then Monica accidentally on purpose bumps into Anne's table and I think she tries to like spill a cup of tea on her or something and then B starts shoving Anne around before Meg breaks it up but then Anne steals a knife from the dining room and hides it in her uniform. Over to Vera quickly now and Vera ends up getting some sexy time in this episode when she ends up coming home from work and she finds her boyfriend George Lucas in her apartment. The pair of them end up spending the night together and I think it's a pretty wild night because the next morning Vera's clothes are literally all over the place. <laughs> Go on Vera, it's nice to see you letting your head down. George keeps telling Vera that she needs to look out for Anne while she's in prison but Vera tells him about B Smith and you know she's very dangerous but this has George very very worried now because let's not forget Anne has given her solicitor a letter with all of the drug dealers names if anything should happen to her. And jumping back over to Anne and the time has finally come. When Doreen attacks Susan as she's being taken away to the funny farm, Monica manages 
manages to grab Anne without any of the officers noticing as she drags her to B's cell. Now this is where B and Anne have a violent confrontation. Now Anne tries to tell B that she wasn't responsible for Sally's death way back in episode 1, but B doesn't believe her and ends up slapping her in the face. Anne then pushes B away and she pulls out that knife that she stole earlier. And the pair of them, they end up struggling around all over the cell and they're rolling around on the floor. And then Anne, she ends up plowing that knife straight into B's side, causing B to scream out. Anne then gets up and she tries to attack Monica with the knife and then she makes a run for it, running, you know, all the way through the prison with women chasing her. It's so dramatic, I love it. She ends up in the laundry and that's the last we see of her in this episode. B is bleeding really, really bad, and Vera sounds the alarm while an ambulance is called for B, and Anne Yates is just nowhere to be found. Now, Vera finds Doreen and some of the women in the laundry, and while Vera searches the laundry for Anne, Vera ends up closing this dryer door that's been left wide open, not realizing that Anne is actually inside of that dryer. I mean, it isn't 100% confirmed in this episode, but it's quite clear that door was open for a reason. Oh dear. I loved the little showdown between B and Anne though. It's been a while since we've had a really good little dramatic fight scene. So will Anne Yates be found in time or will she meet a grisly end? Lynn Warner was having a nice time while she was at work. She met Sid Butterfield's son Jeffrey and the pair of them seemed to click quite nicely. Sid on the other hand he could see that his son Jeffrey was you know attracted to Lynn and he decided to tell his son that she is indeed a criminal and that he would be better to stay away from her and to stick to the girls at his university. So it's looking like that we could be in for another romantic story with Lynn Warner. I mean it wasn't that long ago when she was married to Doug but saying that though that wedding was totally rushed and I found Lynn's relationship with Doug really really far-fetched and unbelievable in fact if you guys remember i hated that storyline i don't know though maybe jeffrey could be the nice guy for lynn let's wait and see officer joyce barry popped up for the very first time in this episode which was lovely to see now i don't remember her being a main character in the show this early on if i remember correctly joyce is one of those officers who pops in and out every now and again just as a bit of an extra but she does have like you know the odd speaking part now and again before she's eventually turned into a regular but I love Joyce Barry I think she's so nice and she's absolutely hilarious so this was a bumper episode to unpack an acid attack a fight a stabbing just another day at Wentworth. My favourite part of this episode has to be the fight scene between B and Anne. Like I said, it's been a long overdue, we, you know, we haven't seen a fight scene for quite some time and this was a great moment. Once again, I don't really have a least favourite moment in this episode. I'm pretty much enjoying all of the current characters and the current storylines, but that could all change in just one episode. Anyway guys, let's hear some of your thoughts. What did you guys think of Anne stabbing the one and only B Smith? I can remember when I first watched it, I was so shocked, it was so unexpected. Did it shock you when you first watched it? Well, let me know everything in the comments box below. Okay then guys, well thank you all for watching this video. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, stay safe out there, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.